spring break was relaxing for most students, but Syracuse basketball didn't get a break. The NCAA's final verdict and the university's response. A confession caught on tape, a millionaire now behind bars for a murder he claimed he didn't commit. And a powerful storm tears through the Pacific, the destruction cyclone can left behind. Welcome back from spring break. It's Monday, March 16th, and I'm Rachel Walski. And I'm Jacob Reynolds. Arts and Sciences has a new dean, and that's our top story for tonight. Earlier this semester, Chancellor Sivarud appointed Karine Roulon as the new dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Roulon has been with the college for years as a chemistry professor, chair of the department, and most recently, interim dean. She has already made changes to the college in faculty assistance and research aid. And in her first ever TV interview, she gave Citrus TV an inside look on her journey to the dean's office. I wanted to be many things because I've always been interested in many things. The science has always fascinated me. But, but reading and literature was really what, what was really important to me in the beginning. So the sciences, that came later. Uh, it was putting it together and understanding how everything works. That was actually very, very cool. So my research uh, as a chemist is, is working uh, with highly reactive metals. And, and I remember when I started out as an assistant professor, I had this idea of, of wanting to make the first of a compound because I knew it could be done. And um, we finally managed to do so. It took us only six years. And, uh, uh, and that was uh, something which made me incredibly happy. It is one of my most widely cited papers. The thought of becoming an administrator and leading a college it's actually a fairly new idea. Um, when I started in Syracuse in 93 as a chemistry faculty member, research and working with my students and teaching was really what made me happy and what I like to do. At some point, I was appointed chair of the department. And, and this is when, when I really understood the opportunities of making a difference for the students and also for research. And uh, then while being chair, I realized that it is actually possible to extend that further by leaving the college and this is when I became interested in that. I think this is a really, really exciting time for the college. The Chancellor's goal of creating an unrivaled college of arts and sciences is really creating an, an incredible amount of energy within the college to really make a big difference. And it's actually quite exciting to, to work with this energy and passion of the faculty and, and really make a difference and drive this college forward and make it unique and special. Some of Dean Roulon's major goals include centralizing the Office of Advising and empowering women in science through technology through the WISE program. You can visit our YouTube page for an extended interview. And the Arts and Sciences Dean isn't the only official adjusting her new seat. The University's Vice Chancellor of Military Affairs is heading to a new VA Advisory Committee. Vice Chancellor Haney wants to rebuild trust with veterans, especially after last year's VA scandal over delayed medical service. Time is ticking as SU mills over whether or not to appeal to parts over the NCAA report. The university must make a decision by Saturday. The chancellor has openly disagreed with some findings and punishments following the, ver the final verdict. Here's what you need to know about the report and the university's response thus far. Special tutors wrote papers for some of the student athletes. The players were given over $8,000 by a local U YMCA employee. Coach Beheim will be suspended for the first nine games of the ACC next year and SU will continue its self-imposed ban through the, through the postseason. And a newly released re police report says the pledges of new Alpha Phi were hazed for weeks before the victim nearly lost four fingers to frostbite. The police say the fraternity forced pledges to exercise in dangerous temperatures three times a day. 
The 20-year-old victim says pledges were often disciplined when making mistakes and violating the fraternity's rules. The university is suspending New Alpha Phi. Two of the fraternity's members are charged with hazing. From Syracuse University to national TV, a group of students are set to guest star on ABC's Shark Tank this Friday. They'll pitch their startup company to the Sharks, a panel of entrepreneurs who will decide whether or not to invest in the project. The startup, a do-it-yourself management company called Brand Yourself, Shark Tank has forked over $45 million to past winners. Looking to book a summer job? The government needs your help. The state wants to hire more than a thousand lifeguards for public swimming pools and beaches. The Parks Department expects many people will go out this summer after this record-breaking winter. To become a state park lifeguard, you must be over 16 years old and pass an exam. The University of Oklahoma's SAE chapter is in hot water, but the brothers think that they can fight back. Find out their reasons for suing the university. Later in the half hour, fashion icon Dolce & Gabbana are under fire, while Elton John and other stars are boycotting the high-end brand. High temperatures coming back from the break. We've seen snow melting. It's about 50 degrees outside right now. Not a lot of winds and not a lot of snow coming down right now, although that will change later in the week. I'll have that in my full weather forecast in a few minutes. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No, no, no. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to Citrus TV News Live at 6. Here's what's happening around the nation. A shocking admission caught on tape has a millionaire behind bars. 71-year-old Robert Durst was being interviewed for The Jinx, a documentary about his connections to three murdered women. He was taking a bathroom break when he muttered these words. Apologize for the technical difficulties, sorry about that. But this scrap of footage recently discovered um, was arrested, and he was arrested after this footage was recently discovered Durst was arrested in New Orleans over the weekend. He's in custody for the death of Susan Berman, who was found dead from a gunshot wound 15 years ago. Police say they found new evidence that links him to Berman's death. Durst will face charges in Los Angeles. And police recently arrested another high-profile shooter. Jeffrey Williams is in custody for shooting two Ferguson police officers. Witnesses say the shooter randomly fired shots from a car during a protest after being robbed. The reaction to the reaction of the now infamous video of University of Oklahoma SAE fraternity brothers. 
Sorry again for the technical difficulties, but officials are still investigating Williams' motives. They think it's possible he did not shoot the officers on purpose. Both officers were taken to the hospital, treated for their injuries. And the brothers of Sigma Alpha Epsilon at the University of Oklahoma are fighting back. They're looking to sue the University of Oklahoma for acting against the fraternity too quickly. The university promptly shut down SAE after distributing a video of the brothers that went viral. The footage showed the brothers belting out racist chants on a bus, but the brothers are determined to stay together. Meanwhile, disaster strikes overseas. Violent storms tore through the Pacific today. Vanuatu, shown here on the map, was hit the hardest. The storm they're calling Cyclone Pam ripped the island nation to shreds. After hours of violent rain and wind, Vanuatu's capital was flooded by the Prima River. The wall of water and mud destroyed most of the buildings and homes in its path. Residents who lost their homes have relocated and are waiting for more help to arrive. As a lot of Vanuatu's communication outlets have been destroyed by the storm, officials are still unclear how much damage has occurred. Rare photos offer a glimpse inside Osama bin Laden's lair prior to the September 11th attacks. These photos show a house constructed of baked mud and stone and spilled on mountainous rugged terrain. The pictures of bin Laden always included an armed rifle for protection. The evidence was first brought to light last month in a trial for an al-Qaeda terrorist. Now the photos are released to the public. Don't be too surprised if you hear rumors of Pope Francis resigning. He was only elected two years ago. But the Pope recently told the media he doesn't expect to continue his term for more than three years. While he doesn't mind being Pope, he believes God wanted him to lead the Catholic Church for a short period of time. Next on his bucket list, Pope Francis can't wait to go into a pizzeria and enjoy his pizza without being recognized. For once in a very long time, I didn't need my heavy winter coat walking around this morning. So it seems that the weather's warming up. We have Caroline Strange here in studio. What do we got today here, Caroline? Well, you're right. You didn't need a coat. It was almost 50 degrees by this afternoon. Winds were pretty calm at about 2 miles an hour, and the humidity stayed pretty low. We saw a little bit of sun, so maybe some sunglasses if you were outside earlier. We are getting into what is average for this time of the year. Typically, we see temperatures around 43 with a low of 25. Nothing quite like in 1990 when it was 80 degrees. Across the northeast, we're one of the warmer parts in New York right now, although some of the areas, especially to the south, are pretty warm right now. Looking at the uh, Doppler radar, not a whole lot of precipitation there is a little bit down into the Pennsylvania area, but nothing over Syracuse right now. If we take a wider look, we'll see this low pressure front bringing that storm across the Great Lakes, and that is going to hit us tonight into tomorrow. We can expect some rain, about a 90% chance, although it will be under an inch, a low of 36 degrees, and winds are st still going to be pretty calm. Tomorrow, it's not going to warm up a whole lot, although we will see some snow as those temperatures dip down a little bit. The high is only 37, and we're expecting winds anywhere from 15 to 25 miles an hour. Now, looking at our five-day forecast, it's going to stay pretty warm right now in the 30s and upper 30s and low 20s. Wednesday is going to be our coolest day this week and we're going to see some lows down in the teens but we've got some rain expected on Tuesday and Wednesday and again into next weekend. Well Caroline we know we saw some pretty warm temperatures today. Do we think it's going to continue to work, warm up or do we think it's going to get cold? again before it warms up for the for good. It'll get cooler a little bit on Wednesday you see down into the low 30s, uh, high 20s, but it's going to continue to warm up into what is more average for this time of the year, especially as we move into April. And now, you know, it's been nice weather today, but how much rain? Are we going to see any rain this week or God forbid snow? We might see a little bit of snow tomorrow morning and some again on Saturday. We won't get more than a couple of inches of rain though, so it'll be pretty light throughout the week. Okay, thanks uh, Caroline. Thanks so much Caroline. And they're known for going door to door to sell delicious cookies. How the harsh winter hit the Girl Scout sales this year. But first, Ebola makes a small comeback, the latest on 10 Americans exposed to the virus. That's up next on Citrus TV News. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. 
How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. If you could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Welcome back to Citrus TV News. And just when we thought the U.S. was Ebola free, a group of 10 Americans traveling to Sierra Leone may have been exposed to the virus. They are being flown back to the U.S. and will close, be closely monitored for symptoms. So far, none of the travelers show no signs of the virus. However, another healthcare worker in the area has tested positive for Ebola. The patient is being treated at Maryland's NIH hospital. And we have found a potential solution to cancer, robots. A San Francisco startup has designed a computer that may be better than doctors at detecting tumors. They call it data-driven medicine. Computers contain millions of pa patients' health records. By comparing one person's records to a million other patients' records, they determine what has to be the most effective way to treat a particular diagnosis. And in a new biography about Steve Jobs, the former Apple CEO reveals his dear friend and current head of Apple, Tim Cook, offered Jobs Jobs a piece of his liver. Cook was concerned about his friend's health and got tested to see if he could be a donor. Jobs refused his friend's offer in 2009, asserting he would never let Cook do him the favor. While Jobs did end up receiving a liver transplant, the tech legend passed away in 2011. And now a look at some consumer news. The recent winter storms have hurt a major market, Girl Scout cookies. The bitter cold weather has made it difficult for Girl Scouts to sell door-to-door -door and table and at tables on the streets. The weather caused a major drop in sales. The cookie sales fund many of the troops' activities. Looks like these girls will need some extra cash to fund this year's community service projects and summer camps. Three Kansas residents have been killed by ice cream. The victims caught a foodborne virus, Listeria, after eating Blue Bell ice cream. FDA investigations show that Listeria bacteria was also found in other Bluebell products. Chocolate chip country cookies, cotton candy bars, and Moo bars are some on the list. This is Bluebell's first product recall in the company's 108-year history. And now some headlines making entertainment news. Thousands of people are joining singer Elton John in boycotting Dolce & Gabbana. The high-profile designers openly express their disdain for artificial fertilization, claiming it produces chemical and synthetic children. John and his husband have two children through in vitro fertilization. The couple felt offended by the designer's statement. Dolce & Gabbana have apologized, saying they were only voicing their personal lifestyle preferences. They didn't mean to offend or criticize John and others. And American Horror Story fans will come together and mourn the resignation of Jessica Lange. The Emmy Award-winning actress announced on Saturday that she will not be returning to the show. Lang has been a part of the cast for four seasons since the pilot episode. In honor of Lang's character in American Horror Story Season 3, long live Supreme. And coming up, Syracuse women's basketball will find out who they play in the first round of the tournament. Men's lacrosse faces toughest competition yet. And of course, the Mets have gotten off to their usual start. Stay tuned. Oh, 
you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look. Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Thank you, dear. Oh, you're very supple. It's like I was at your age. Back then, I was a sex expert. Used to call me the buttered biscuit. I know about birth control, too. So you can ask me anything, baby. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... Have you had sex in this car yet? The 2015 men's basketball tournament was finalized last night and Syracuse fans will get a chance to witness history. The Carrier Dome will host the East Regional from March 26th to March 29th. The good news is that Orange fans may have a chance to throw their trash at Rick Pitino once more. The top seeds in the East are Villanova, Virginia, Oklahoma, and Pitino's Louisville squad. The bad news? Well, in the words of Rick Pitino himself, Rakeem Christmas won't be walking through that door. The Orange men's squad banned itself from the 2015 postseason on February 4th. And even if they were eligible, this station would lose all credibility if I said they could win the championship. However, that does not mean that Syracuse basketball is over. The Syracuse women's team will learn its rank in the NCAA women's bracket tonight. ESPN's women's bracketologist Charlie Cream, whose toupee isn't nearly as obvious as men's bracketologist Joan Lunardi, has placed the Orange as the seventh seed. The selection show starts at 7, but there's no need to give ESPN ratings. You can follow along at Citrus TV Sports on Twitter for live updates from the Mellow Center. And the Syracuse men's lacrosse team has been on a roll, winning four straight before hosting lacrosse powerhouse John Hop Johns Hopkins on Sunday. Would John Desco's squad be able to hold off the Blue Jays, or would they disappoint against big talent, like every other men's team at Syracuse this year? And at first, they did. But as we head to the Carrier Dome, you'll see how they recovered. Johns Hopkins originally took a 3-0 lead. They stormed right in. However, in the first quarter, Hakeem Lucky would get the pass and would shake his defender, getting the orange on the board, his seventh goal of the season. It would be 3-1 Blue Jays. But in the second quarter, Nicky Galasso would lose his defender behind the net, fire a right in the goal, and right there, Syracuse would come back from a 5-1 deficit to take a 6-5 lead. Johns Hopkins wasn't done, however. 8-8 would be the tie after, check out this name, Shaq Stanwich. He took the pass and beat Bobby Wardell to tie the game. But in the fourth quarter, Syracuse went on a 3 to nothing run and won the game. This Randy Stotts goal would finish off a four-goal night. It would be an empty netter, and Syracuse would improve to 6 nothing on the year. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred has said that he has received a formal request from Pete Rose asking that his lifetime ban be lifted. Rose, the all-time leader in hits, has made requests in past to the former commissioners, Faye, Vincent, and Bug Selig, but neither were considered. Manfred has said that he will consider Rose's request on its merits, but will only do so if Rose promises to stop calling his house every night at 3 a.m. And now, I can't believe it's come to this. Breaking international news. Former Heisman winning quarterback Tim Tebow worked out for the Philadelphia Eagles today. Tebow last played for the New England Patriots, who cut Tebow in 2012, and this is just the latest of eye-grabbing organizational moves that Eagles head coach Chip Kelly has made in this offseason. Meanwhile, ESPN is considering moving its headquarters to Bedford, Pennsylvania, the halfway point between Philadelphia and Cleveland, home to Johnny Manziel. And in one of my favorite segments, today's depressing Knicks slash Mets news, New York, Met, New York Mets ace Zach Wheeler is heading back to New York to have Tommy John surgery joining reliever Joss Edgen as the second Mets pitcher in two days to commit the season-ending surgery. While manager Terry Collins has already indicated by that Dylan G will replace Wheeler in the rotation, the Mets have suffered six straight losing seasons. 
at this point, it's just not fair to make jokes about them. It's just not a good year to be wearing blue and orange in New York City. Well, thank you. Uh, March Madness, big time of year. Who you got? Who's your final four? I look to the Midwest bracket. I see Kentucky. I see Kansas. But I say end that already. My sister, a few years ago, picked UCLA because she liked their uh, football team. She meant USC. However, that was the year U UCLA made it to the final four. And I think I'm going to go with the Bruins just for that reason, for my sister's luck. Now, what are some of the big contenders in the NCAA tournament this year to look out for? Who should we kind of be looking to get into that uh, Sweet 16 and a little bit um, filtered down? Well, like I said, Kentucky's obviously a big one. They haven't lost a game yet this year. Kansas is also in that bracket. The two of them faced off earlier this year, and it was, it was a, not really close, but both teams have improved. They, things change. Villanova is another great team to look out for, and of course, Duke's always there in the mess. Do you have a Cinderella this year? A team you think is going to surprise us all? Uh, Michigan State has always been a real Cinderella team to me. Usually when they're good, I always want to put them in the Final Four, and even when they're bad, I seem to always want to put them there. Tom, Enzo, Tom Izzo does a great job with that team. All right, all right thanks thank so much. Keep an eye out for those four-leaf clovers. Tomorrow is going to be St. Patrick's Day. But that's not the only tradition on March 17. What other states and countries do to celebrate is after the break. Sing, and Tommy can dance. So we're, we're gonna, gonna put some hands in their pants. Aww. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants. They've got Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Huntington! Every proper bear knows that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Oh, really? I just did what any bear would do. So know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size. I like it. To learn more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Oh, hello there. Oh, where's that bear? <coughs> Pretty much good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. And Caroline Strange is back here with us in the studio. Caroline, what should we wear when we wake up tomorrow morning? Well, you might want to have to break out that coat again. It is going to be a little chillier than it was today, down into the upper 30s. But the temperature is only going to drop down as the day goes on, and maybe an umbrella, because it's still supposed to rain early in the morning. Well, that's pretty unfortunate, but thanks, Caroline. Remember to wear green tomorrow. It's good luck for St. Patrick's Day. Most of the local festivities like the parade and Irish dancing happened this past weekend, but no doubt people will be celebrating the patron saint of Ireland. Even though the holiday originated in Ireland, many countries around the world celebrate this holiday, not just the Irish, and it's interesting to see what kind of traditions other places adopt. In Wisconsin, people dress up as leprechauns and change highway signs to read New Dublin. In Australia, the Queensland Irish Association dresses up as 18th century immigrants and convicts ex exiled to Australia. Now that's all we have for Citrus TV tonight. Once again, I'm Rachel Walski. And I'm Jacob Reynolds. Tune in tomorrow for a special episode of SA Today. Good night, Syracuse.